Hey guys, Jason's here. Thank you for choosing Yaystar P Service PBX. With this PBX, a PBX Plus More system that provides advanced UC experience, including web call, video conference, operator panel, and queue management with full mobility. In this series of videos, we'll start from a default device and explain how to configure a P Service PBX step by step. In the first video, we will introduce about initial settings where we prepare the system for further configuration. First thing first, we need to deploy this PSERVICE PBX into our local area network. The default IP address of Yaystar PSERVICE PBX is 192.168.5.150. We can change it according to our network simply by using the NFC read and write function. Open Linkus from our mobile. Click on NFC, then use our mobile NFC to scan the Yaystar logo area of the PSERVICE PBX. The PBX doesn't need to be powered on. Keep it unplugged. Then we can configure the internet settings of the PBX on our mobile. Here we can change the Ethernet mode, IP address, gateway, and DNS server. After modifying the internet parameters, use our mobile NFC, scan the PBX to confirm modifications, and make it work. The next step is to power on our PSERVICE PBX. Log into the system with the IP address we set. And as mentioned, our configuration platform is based on web. To log into our configuration platform, all we need is a web browser. By the way, we recommend Edge, Chrome, and Opera. The first time you log into the web GUI, you will see the installation wizard. Let's follow this guidance to finish our initial settings. Firstly, we need to double-check the IP parameters of our PBX. If we want to modify anything, we can do it right here. When we finish everything, click Next to continue. On PSERVICE PBX, there's no default username or password, so we need to set it up by ourselves. The password must be at least 10 digits in length and include both upper and lower cases letters and numbers for security concerns. Suppose we want the system to keep us notified when there are sent certain types of events. In that case, we can check Send Email Notification to PBX Administrator and then select the way we want to get informed and the notification type. The next thing we're supposed to do is setting the system time. It's a crucial thing to do because our core function, like call management, can function according to it. And if we want to check our CDR from time to time, we have to set the system time correctly. If we have internet access for our PBX, we can directly synchronize the system time to an NTP server. We have a default NTP server URL pre-configured. It's available for changing as well. Then, choose the time zone and determine if we need to enable daylight saving time. But if the PBX doesn't have access to the internet, we can also set the time manually. Meanwhile, Change the corresponding date and time display format according to our preferences. Now we move to a more customized setting. Here we can set up the system prompt language. Voice prompt can function under various circumstances as a way for the PBX to interact with callers and colleagues like to prompt colleagues that agents are occupied. It only comes with the English language package by default. While it supports multilingual voice prompts on the system, if the PBX is connected to the internet, we can click on the download online prompt to download the prompt language we need. Well, in the end, check all the configured settings on the summary page. If everything's cracked, click reboot to let the configurations take effect. All right, that was all for this episode. More details, visit yaser.com. Hit the subscription button if you're not. Catch you guys in the next one.